I'd like to tell you about a series of translations I've done from the Tibetan of five mind treasures or quintessential texts revealed by one of the greatest of the 19th century Dzogchen masters of Tibet by the name of Dujum Nyingma. Uh, his collected works are included in about 18 volumes, but five texts are really his pith instructions on the practice of the great perfection. And on the basis of, the, of these teachings, uh, he's renowned for the fact that 13 of his disciples achieved rainbow body during his lifetime, and he prophesied that if these teachings continued on, that 100 individuals over time would achieve rainbow body. And so these teachings on Dzogchen have proven themselves to be extraordinarily effective in bringing about profound transformation, liberation, direct realization of pristine awareness or rikpa. These teachings are called mind treasures because they were stored in his mind stream centuries ago by the great Indian adept Padmasambhava. And in fact, all of Dujum Lingba's teachers were visionary teachers, that is, teachers who appeared to him in dreams, in pure visions. He claimed that he didn't have a single human guru, that all of the teachings he received from childhood on uh, took place by way of his own pure vision. Uh, he had a very strong connection, of course, with Padmasambhava, having been one of the 25 disciples of Padmasambhava. And so these teachings made an enormous impact on 19th, 19th, 19th century Tibet. Uh, when he passed away in the year 1904, uh, this led to five emanations or five incarnations of him, including the ever so renowned Dujum Rinpoche, his holiness name is Dujum Rinpoche, uh, who became the supreme head of the Nyingma order. So I have received the transmissions, teachings on these texts, primarily from, uh, from Gyatra Rinpoche, Domang Gyatra Rinpoche, who is my primary Dzogchen Lama, and he's authorized me, given me guidance and blessings to translate these texts into English and allowed them to, or given the permission for them to be published. Um, these texts form quintessential teachings above all in the practice of Dzogchen or the Great Perfection. Yadra Rinpoche first taught me the most extensive one, uh, which in Tibetan is called Neluk Rangjung. I've translated here under the short title the, the Vajra Essence. It's already been published once. I did this under the, his very close guidance, translating this roughly 400 page treatise. Uh, which is entirely an ongoing account of a visionary teaching he received from Samantabhadra manifesting in the form of the Lakebourne Vajra manifestation of Padmasambhava. It's an extraordinary text covering all aspects of the path from beginning to end, culminating in rainbow body. Translated this many years ago, but over time, as I believe as my understanding is, has improved and I have drawn from the benefits of other fine translators and teachings I've received, I felt it was time to bring about a, uh, a polished, a revised translation. So this has been done. Uh, this is the most extensive one. Uh, and then following this is the also very renowned text. Again, a series of, of revelator, revelatory teachings uh, that, that Dujum Lingba received from various great masters of the past, deities, yadams, and so forth, uh, called Buddhahood Without Meditation. This text has been well translated by an outstanding translator by the name of Richard Barron, or Chirki Nima. Um, but I felt that I, I was really felt drawn to translating the most definitive commentary to this classic, uh, written by Sera Kando, who was one of the great uh, female adepts, great uh, Dertun in her own right, exactly of this lineage. She was the consort of the fifth son of Dujum Lingba by the name of Time Yusser. And her commentary is extraordinarily clear, elucidating, and so Gyatra Nimbashi authorized me to translate this as well. But since I was translating the commentary, I really had to do my own translation of the root text as well, and not simply pilfer from Richard Barron's fine translation. So those are the first two of the translations. And then there's a, a marvelous text by the name of The Intent of Samantabhadra. And this is about 80 pages. Uh, something of a condensed version of the Vajra essence, uh, but now rather than covering the more elaborate practices of stage regeneration, of completion, uh, this, the view of Samatabhadra, focuses primarily on just four practices that is, the shamatha, vipassana, the breakthrough or techchut to pristine awareness, and the tutgel, 
uh, leading to the spontaneous actualization of the full powers of Buddha mind. And so this is just in 80 pages, an utterly quintessential text. I found enormously inspiring it. As soon as I, I began reading it years ago, I thought, oh, but this must be in English. How can, how can we deprive other people who can't speak or read Tibetan? How can we deprive them of this text? So I consulted with Rinpoche. He gave me encouragement to translate it. And then years ago, I received the oral transmission and commentary to another delightful text, uh, very autobiographical in nature, written primarily in prose, again, of course, by Dujum Lingba, called The Foolish Dharma of an Idiot Clothed in Mud and Feathers. And this also, a translation has been done. I received the, the transmission and the commentary from Gacho Rinpoche, and then I, in turn, taught it to a student of mine when I was a university professor in Santa Barbara. She translated it under my guidance, did a very good job, but again, years later, looking back on the translation, I thought, maybe I can do a bit more polishing on this, so I retranslated that text, which then freshly appears in this three-volume set uh, to be published by Wisdom Publications. And then finally, there's the most quintessential of these mind treasures on Dzogchen, revealed by Dujun Lingba, and it's called the Sharp Vajra of Conscious Awareness Tantra. And in only about 12 pages of the root text itself, he covers again Shamatha, right, in terms of the method of taking the mind as a path, which is an utterly brilliant method, especially in harmony with or conducive to Dzogchen practice. And then the Vipassana, insight into the ultimate nature of reality, into the nature of emptiness. Then the texture, the breakthrough to original purity, pristine awareness. And finally, the direct crossing over, or Tutgel, to the spontaneous actualization of all the qualities of Buddha mind. And so this quintessential text is an enormously condensed, compa compact. Um, it utterly is brilliant, uh, but very difficult to understand on its own. Happily, one of Dujum Lingba's closest disciples by the name of Bematashi uh, listened closely to the oral commentary given by Dujum Lingba himself to his own mind treasure. Uh, he either had an excellent memory or he made very, very good notes. And so he wrote his commentary, which is essentially the oral commentary of Dujum Lingba himself, about 100 pages or so. And I just find this enormously inspiring. Again, uh, taking the essence of the entire path, laying it out with utmost clarity. And what I find is just enormously inspiring. It's said multiple times in these mind treasures of Dujum Lingba that these would be for the people of the future. And in fact, one prophecy that he received um, was that his teachings on Dzogchen would flourish in the cities of the West. So Gyatso Rinpoche was the first one who told me of this prophecy, and as soon as I heard about it, I thought, I want to help. What can I do to, to uh, facilitate this, do anything I can do, even if it's the tiniest bit, to help these profound, inviting teachings with such a blessing uh, to be able to flourish in the cities of the West? And from my perspective, the West is everything west of Tibet, and that goes to Europe, to North America, across the Pacific, to East Asia, and right back to Tibet again. The West is now global. And so these teachings again and again state that these mind treasures are intended for the people of the future. And as I've read these, poured over them, practiced them to the best of my ability, I found something quite exceptional about these teachings in the, in the sense that, on the one hand, they're absolutely representative of the Dzogchen tradition as a whole. There's nothing iconoclastic about them. So they, so they really encompass or synthesize the vast teachings of great adepts like Longchen Rap Jamba, Lama Mipam Rinpoche, and of course, above all, Padma Zimab himself. But there's also something utterly contemporary about them. And this is what I found really striking for me as a person born in the 20th century, now living in the 21st. Uh, it simply seems to cut right through time. As much as I admire and truly cherish Tibetan culture and revere it as a marvelous culture, uh, these teachings seem to transcend culture. I don't find them specifically Tibetan, or they're certainly not Western in the sense of European or American or Australian. Um, they simply seem to cut through culture, to be so deep that all the vestiges of time and place, that these happen to be revealed in the 19th century rather than the 12th century or the 21st, there's a timeless quality to them, a, a, a sense that they transcends geography, trans, transcends culture, and is inviting. It gives a sense 
that you could do this if you immerse yourself in the practice, having received teachings from an authentic, qualified lama, if you have ongoing guidance, you shed your fixation on the eight mundane concerns, develop an authentic sense of renunciation, arouse bodhicitta, and then follow the practices with great enthusiasm and perseverance, uh, there's no reason to believe that we cannot in this modern era, regardless of our ethnic background, our acculturation, whether in the East or the West, there's no reason to believe that we cannot now, in the 21st century, scale to the same heights as the great adepts who are the disciples of Dujum Lingba and of Dujum Lingba himself. So as, Holiness, as His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who is my root guru, as he once commented when he was pointed out, the obvious that we're living in degenerate times, so many things uh, have gone downhill in society in general, and Dharma has been the Buddha Dharma, has suffered great adversities, great setbacks in the 20th century for various reasons. But as Holiness acknowledged, of course, in many ways, these are degenerate times. But he added, if we in this modern world, if we practice today, like Milarepa, the great Tibetan yogi, then we too have every chance of, ga of gaining the same realizations as Milarepa did. So in this note, I invite everyone who has who is intuitively drawn to these teachings, has faith, has access to one or more qualified teachers to guide you in these practices, uh, to seek out these three volumes of the Mind Treasures and two commentaries to the teachings of Jujum Lingba on Dzogchen. Uh, I think you may be in inspired by them as I have been, and if you are not only inspired, but you read them, you study them, you receive teachings on them, and you put them into practice, you may find that your life and your mind stream are transformed in enormously beneficial ways, irreversible ways, that will lead you firmly on the path to awakening, possibly even in this lifetime.